Welcome to our lesson about recording audio. In this tutorial, we'll be picking up from our last lesson with the project that we created recording some music via audio input. In our previous lesson, we set up our inputs and outputs, then we record enabled the tracks that we wanted to record on. We also enabled the monitor button so that we could hear our levels. Now let's record disable the voice track. I'm just going to lay down the piano right now. And let's select only the piano track. We checked our levels to make sure they weren't too loud. That was in the red on the input meter. We don't want it past this line on the channel meter. We also learned that we want our levels to be as loud as possible from the source input without going into the red on the meter. So it's really important to sound check the loudest part of the music you're going to be playing. The audio channel slider here doesn't actually measure the input. That's a measurement of the output. In order to check your input level signal accurately, we need to open the mixer. Let's select devices from the main menu and scroll down to mixer. The shortcut key for opening the mixer window is F3. And the mixer window opens. Let's stretch it out a bit so you can see all the channels. There are, of course, many ways to manipulate the mixer, and we'll be learning about those later in this course. But for this lesson, I just want to focus on recording our audio. So let's get rolling. Let's take a look at the notepad. Right now, I want to make a note in the notepad for this track on the inspector panel so that I don't forget what I've done here. I'm going to enter the name of the sound bank that I'm using. I'll enter the volume level as well and the date of the recording. Let's take a look at the transport panel. As you see, I've enabled the click track because I want to record with this metronome to get my timing right. The button is lit, displays on. I've also enabled pre-count clicking, which gives me two bars of clicking that starts before recording begins. Here's my custom fixed tempo for the recording. I've disabled the tempo track. The tempo button is not lit. And on the mixer, I want to make sure that I won't go up into this area here. It's known as in the red. Now watch what happens if my levels are too loud or hot. If they are, I might end up with some digital clipping. Out, Cubase signals me with this clip message on the input meter. To reset the peak meter, just click on the clip signal. And for more information about digital clipping, please see our course on recording, mixing, and mastering. I'll need to make some adjustments either in the volume that I'm playing, or the volume of the instrument, or the gain on the audio interface. And now my levels look much better. Before you start recording, make sure you position the cursor at the place where you want Cubase to start recording. In my case, it's going to be at the beginning of the project, so I'm going to click the Return to Zero button on the transport panel. Let me adjust the size of the mixer window so it fits better into my recording screen here. I can adjust the display for each channel in the mixer, as well as each section of the mixer. Now let me just drag in the mixer window a bit. and put it down in the bottom left so that I can see the track I'm recording. By the way, when you're using the mixer, it is a useful idea to have mixer always on top selected. Don't right click on the title bar. You need to right click in a blank area of the mixer and ensure always on top is selected. And this keeps your mixer layered on top of the project window rather than underneath. Next thing we need to do is to click the record button either on the top of the project window or on the floating transport panel. And our recording begins. At this point, I should be hearing my pre-count clicks, but I don't. Let's figure out why. The recording has begun. You see how the track lights up in red? An event image is created on the timeline. Let's stop our recording and go investigate. Just press the stop button or the space bar on your keyboard. In order to hear clicking, you need to have the click track routed to your output bus. Let's go examine our buses. Select Devices and scroll down to VST Connections, or you can use the shortcut of F4. Let's go to the Outputs tab. We toggle on the click routing to this output by clicking in the Click column. Now the click track will route to the output bus. And let's do a test record to ensure that I can hear the clicking. We'll just press record exactly where the cursor is. And here are my two bars of pre-count clicking. Let's press stop. 
or the space bar to stop the recording. Let's use the Object Selector tool to select our first audio event. Notice that it has a name, Piano underscore zero one. The next event that I record on this track is going to be called Piano underscore zero two. And that's even if I delete this empty event here, Piano zero one. Let's select it and press delete to get rid of it. Cubase won't write over that file, Piano underscore zero one. And that's in case I need to use it at some point later on. Here it is in my Windows Explorer system, still in the audio folder for this project. Let's close Windows Explorer. And this is a basic principle of non-destructive editing. Cubase won't replace any files in case I might need them later on. Let's press return to zero on the transport control so that my cursor is positioned right at the beginning of the project. Click record. Here's my two bars of pre-count clicking. And our recording begins. I'll give it one more bar to give me some extra room. And now I play. I'll just play a couple bars of this music. And when we're done, we press the stop button on the transport controls or the space bar. Cubase finishes recording. Here's our new file, piano underscore zero two. Let's record disable the track so we don't accidentally record over this work. We wouldn't want to lose our first audio event. Now take a moment to save your work. Control S is your shortcut, or you can go to the file or Cubase menu and select save. Now let's lay down some scratch vocal. We're going to select the track that we want to record. And it's automatically record enabled for us. Let's just stretch it out a bit. In order for me to hear the piano while I'm recording this track, I need to disable the monitor button on the piano. That means I won't be monitoring input for this bus. In order for me to hear the voice input while I'm recording, I need to enable the monitor for the voice track. So let's select it here. Let's make sure I've got the correct input routing. I'm using the mic input for this, not the stereo that I used for the piano. Our mixer shows the active track. Let's stretch it out a bit. I don't want to follow the clicks for the vocal, just hear the pre-click, so let's turn the click track off. Now let's do a level check. If you find that your levels are too low, you need to get either a little closer to the mic, maybe adjust the mic settings, boost the preamp signal before it's routed into Cubase, adjust the gain on your audio interface, any of these things. Let me drag the mixer window up a little bit. Let's click on the clip indicator to refresh the peak level display. Here we can see at a glance what input level our signal is at in decibels. You need to make sure you leave some headroom for effects and EQ during the mixing and mastering process. But if your input is maybe down as low as minus 14 to 20 for vocals, that's just too low. You're going to need it a little bit hotter. Okay, we are ready to begin recording, so let's get set up. First, we'll take the cursor back to zero by clicking return to zero on the transport controls. Now we'll select and record enable our track. And let's press the record button. My pre-clicks come first. And then I left an empty bar. And press stop when you're done. Or the space bar on your keyboard. Here's our second audio event, voice underscore zero one. First thing to do is save our work. We wouldn't want to lose any little masterpieces. We go to File and Save, or Control Command S. Let's record disable the track. And this concludes our first tutorial on recording audio. In our next lesson, we'll be learning how to playback audio that we've recorded.